Hi everyone, I am Prachi Agarwal. Welcome to our channel, Learn Competitive Programming with CodeChef. If you are interested in competitive programming and want to learn and master data structures and algorithms, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Every week, we'll post CodeChef problem explanations, conceptual videos on various programming paradigms, and also conduct live problem-solving sessions. But before we actually get started, Here's a reminder to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. Great. Now that you have subscribed, let's get started. So guys, welcome to our very first conceptual video course that is Introduction to Programming. Now many of you want to learn programming, but what most of us lack is that we are not clear with our fundamentals. So this course will ensure that we study the fundamentals first and then move on to coding. Gradually and slowly, you will be able to understand how the process of programming works and how you can be good at writing code. So let's get started. Now first and foremost, let us discuss what programming actually is. So basically, there is a program that is written in order to make something happen in order to execute some of the instructions right and a person who writes a program is known as programmer and this entire process of writing a program that is known as program so what do you need to do in order to be a good programmer programming is all about giving instructions we give a few lines of instructions those instructions are executed and our task is done. So to be a good programmer, you need to be good at giving instructions. That is the gist of programming. Now being good at giving instructions means giving proper and accurate instructions. The instructions have to be proper, they have to be accurate, and they have to be clear. Means there cannot be any kind of uh, ambiguity whenever you are giving instructions. Like take for example, a very uh, simple example that uh, you send a child to bring butter. Now, even if you do not tell the child the brand of the butter which you want, still the child be, will be able to take that decision on his or her own. Because uh, they know that uh, what butter comes to the home always and based on that they will be able to make a decision. But Similarly, if you tell a computer that you want to buy butter from some uh, online shopping site, uh, then the computer will not be able to decide that for you because the computer cannot take decisions on its own. You will also have to tell the computer the brand name of which the butter you need. Only then you will be able to buy that butter. So you see that giving the art of giving instructions is so important when you are doing programming. Now take another example. Suppose you are given a recipe by your mother and uh, you need to cook that. Now you are following each and every instructions very carefully. But what if there is something wrong with the instructions? What if uh, some ingredient is missing or it is not accurately mentioned that what quantity you have to add in the dish? So then you will not be able to uh, get the dish prepared as per your taste. So that is why giving instructions is very important and knowing the way to give instructions is also very important when you are doing programming because same goes with programming. If you miss even a single line or even a single point that is uh, to be given in your code, then you will never get the desired output. Now, when we are talking about instructions, then we give instructions in one or the other particular language, right? If we are uh, giving a recipe to somebody, then we give it either in our mother language or we give it in English, Hindi. These are some of the languages that we use to give instructions to anyone. Similarly, a computer also has a language that it understands. It does not understand Hindi or English, but it understands programming language. So, for a computer, when we need to give 
instructions to a computer, we use programming language. Some of the programming languages are C++, Java, Python. These are some of the most popular programming languages that we use in order to give instructions to the computer. Now that we have understood what programming is, we should also discuss that why do we actually need programming and how does it help us? Suppose that a student registration has to be done for a sports camp. Now there are two methods by which this registration could be carried out. The first one is the manual method. Manual method means that a person will be sitting with a register and will be noting down all the details of a child. And if in future there is some change that needs to be done in the details of a child, then that person will have to refer in the register and make changes there. This is the first process that would be followed. The second process is that forms could be used instead of manual method and where these forms could be used these forms could be used on a website and the child will be required to type all the details in the form and submit it and on click of submit all the details of the child will be stored in a database and this way if there are any changes in future that the child wants to uh, make in his details then it can easily be done with the help of a form so what do you think is the better method, the manual method or the form method? So definitely I think the form method is much better because it will be fast. We will not have to hire one other person to keep a check of all of this. The third thing is that for uh, suppose in a sports camp there are 1000 students. So this manual setup will have to be done. 1000 times means 1000 times the details of a student will have to be noted down but in a form every student will type their own details and it will be stored in the database on just one click now how is all this being carried out in the form method that uh, people are typing their details and it is uh, being stored in the database in just one click it is done by programming so you see that programming makes our work so easy so why do we actually need programming? We need programming for three things. Because we want that our tasks should be carried out in speed. They should not take a lot of time. Then we want automation. Now automation means that we want some stuff to be uh, done by its own. Like here, when we are typing the details after that, just on click of a button, automatically all the details of the student is getting stored. So that is automation and that we can achieve using programming the third thing is repetition of tasks now uh, they can be humongous tasks that have to be carried out now if one person is going to do, do those many tasks one by one it will take such a lot of time it will be a wastage of time but if we can give the command just once and that task will be carried out as many number of times as we want just like in this case then it will be so much better. So that is the reason that we need programming and we need to learn how to do programming in the best manner possible. Now that we have discussed the need for programming, let us get back to our main focus that was instructions. Let us discuss what is the process in which we can give instructions. So as I gave you an example before, that you have a recipe and you have to follow each and every instruction given in the recipe in order to cook a dish. Now, how is that process being carried out? Let us see. The first thing that will be present in the recipe will be the raw items that you will be needing for your dish. The raw items can be anything like it can be an egg, it can be a baking powder or it can be vegetables raw vegetables or raw fruits so that you can be reading for your recipe the second thing will be the recipe itself now here what i mean by the recipe is that it will be a line by line instruction of the cooking method so you can refer to recipe here as the cooking method of any dish that you will be given as an instruction which you will have to follow in order to cook the dish 
and after having followed this recipe you will get the cooked dish in your hand this is the step that is followed while we are giving instructions now what do each of these items that are written here what do these items mean in the world of programming the first item that is the raw materials can be mirrored as input now input is something that we get from the user or it is already given to us on which we perform the instructions which takes us to our next item which is the recipe or the cooking method so these cooking methods are the instructions that are based on the input right the your recipe is based on whatever raw items that you have similarly the instructions are based on whatever input you have now the third thing is the cooked dish which can be said to be as the output now output is something that we get when we perform the instructions and we get the desired result so the desired result that we get is known as the output and in this case like you can see that you have some raw items you follow the instructions and prepare something and finally you get the cooked food that you eat similarly in programming first you have some or the other input or you can also say that it is known as data so you have some data on which you perform the instructions and based on that you get the desired output or the result now with output there is also a print written because in order to view this result we need to print it in a computer but that we will see later when we start to code but for now we know that we require data based on which we give instructions and then we get the desired result now all of this process is carried out using a particular language like in this case we are using english in order to explain you uh, what programming is and the recipe which we may give can be in any language like hindi english spanish and so on so does this ensure that whatever instructions we are giving will be accurate will be proper no right knowing a language does not ensure that we will be able to give proper instructions take for example in a recipe suppose either one of these two sentences are given the first sentence is add some sugar and versus the second sentence is add 200 grams of sugar now which sentence do you think will fit in the recipe such that we get the desired result we get the desired dish that we wanted now add some sugar is quite ambiguous we will not know what amount of sugar is to be added so the cooked dish may not taste as we wanted it to because it is written some sugar now some sugar can be one spoon of sugar or it can also be one bowl of sugar so how are we to know how much sugar is to be added whereas in the second sentence it is 200 grams of sugar which is an accurate measurement of how much sugar is to be added in the dish so we will get a perfectly made dish now this is the difference between giving proper or accurate instructions so what does the art of giving instructions require the art of giving instructions require clarity of th thought and to the point accurate instructions now you have to be really clear about what you want to say you might think that if you say add some sugar then uh, a person may be able to assume according to the recipe how much sugar should be added but it is not so you cannot uh, just assume that the other person will know what you are trying to say you have to be to the point you have to give accurate instructions and for that for understanding the art of giving instructions we will be using flow charts in order to understand how to give proper instructions now what is a flow chart a flow chart is the visual representation of the process of giving instruction before jumping to a programming language and directly starting to code it will be better for us that we start with a flow chart because the first and foremost thing that we need to learn is the art of giving instructions without that we will never be able to be a good programmer so this visual representation will help you to understand that 
how can you give instructions in an accurate manner? Now, following the same process of giving instructions, that is input first, based on the input instructions and then the output, let us take a simple mathematical example. The mathematical example will be that of addition, for which we will need two numbers in order to add them and get the desired result. So, this is our example. We have taken two numbers here, 4 and 5. We have added them, given the instruction to add these two numbers and we have got the desired result as 9. This is how this process is followed. But what if we want that whatever two numbers we give, we want them to be added. So how do we do that? Here we have fixed two numbers that is 4 or 5. But the other scenario that I am talking about is we just give the command that whatever two numbers are given as the input, we need to add them. So for that, we have the concept of variables. Now what is this a and b? This a, b and this sum that you see here, all of these are known as variables. Now a variable is a name in which the data is stored. That means if you use a variable name, then you will be able to access the value that is stored in that particular name. For example, see A and B here. A and B here represent the two numbers on which we want to perform addition. So if we store, if we want uh, that those two numbers on which we want to perform addition is 4 and 5. So we can store 4 in A and 5 in B. And we will be able to now access 4 and 5 by using their variable names that is A and B. And how are we storing these numbers in these variables? By using the assignment. This equal to is known as assignment and it is used to store the right hand side value into the left hand side variable. Now these variable names can be anything. Like here I took the two numbers to be A and B. Now you could have also taken them to be N1 and N2. So based on whatever you want, these variable names can be alphanumeric in nature. The second thing is that either a constant can be stored in these variables like I am doing here. I am storing 4 and a 5 in these variables A and B. Or a particular value or a particular evaluation can also be stored in these variables like here I'm storing a plus b which is the instruction that we gave that is the addition that we wanted to perform on these two variables that is a and b we added them and now we are storing the value of this in the variable sum and this sum will contain the result that we needed so at last we are printing this sum we can either print it or here you can see that in place of output I have written sum here because sum contains the value which we needed as the desired result. So this is all we need to know about variables and assignment. Now this is an example that we are taking two inputs. We are performing addition and then we are getting the desired result. This is an example of a program. And we will have to represent this in the form of a flowchart. But how do we do that? We will be seeing that in the next video.